Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our online virtual experience here at The Bridge. My name is Joe Quagliata. I'm one of the pastors here at The Bridge. I've been involved in pastoral ministry here for over 30 years, and it's my pleasure to be with you today. Um, for the past 70 years, this local church has been a beacon of light to thousands of people. It started back in 1950 uh, with a tent erected in a small piece of property on the corner of two residential streets in Valley Stream. And here we are 70 years later. And God has a plan for our church. Countless people have passed through our doors and have heard the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. I'm one of those people, and there are people out there to hear, need to hear that Jesus loves them. Today we venture forward as committed as ever, as committed as ever, to building bridges that connect people to God and connect them to each other. We will walk forward by faith, and we will walk into whatever it is that God has for us. And I'm here to tell you that what God has for us is good. It is good. It is good because he loves his church and he loves this church. If this is your first or second time with us, we'd encourage you to click on the upper right-hand corner of your screen. There's a word called connect, and that'll give you an opportunity to complete some information, fill out some information to give us an opportunity to, opportunity to extend a more personal welcome to you later on this week, and we would love to do that. And if you'd like to support the work that we're doing here at the bridge, you can go to thebridgeli.com and click on the Give button, or you can text the keyword BridgeGive to 77948. I want to invite you to really enter into this worship experience today. I want to invite you to make the place where you are right now, wherever it is, a sacred place. Don't multitask. Don't be checking the news feed on your phone. Don't put this in the background while you multitask doing things around the house. No, I would invite you right now to close your eyes and open your hands and pray, God, I want to be open to receive whatever it is that you have for me today. God, in this time, I want to love you with all of my heart all of my soul, all of my mind, and all of my strength. In Jesus' name. Don't observe. Participate. We are scattered. We are in different places virtually, but we are gathered in Jesus' name. God bless you. I'm not 
that together. To you, the slain and risen King, we lift our voice from heaven, singing worthy, Lord of all. Oh, thank you, God. We thank you, God. Oh, for letting us come in your presence. Oh, you're worthy of so much more than This morning, we would like to give you the opportunity to participate in communion. If you've made arrangements for communion this morning with the juice and the bread, we just invite you, invite you to be a part of this. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the bread which has come down from heaven. He is so many things to us. And whatever happens in our lives, whatever happens, and how we might interpret the things that happen in our lives, one thing is very, very clear. Jesus loves us, and he'll be with us through anything. When he was with his disciples before he was to give his life, he said to them, do this in remembrance of me. Don't ever forget what I have done for you. Don't ever forget the depth of my love and commitment to you. That applied to them and it applies to us. So let's partake together. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he said, take this bread, all of you, and eat it for this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. And then he said, take this cup, all of you, and drink it, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Let's drink together. Jesus, thank you for what you've done for us. We love you, and we pray in your name. Amen. This morning, it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce our guest speaker. Pastor Art Alexander holds a very, very special place in the life and history of this church. Pastor Art was the pastor of the Bridge Church. Now, we weren't always called the Bridge Church. For many, many years, we were the Valley Stream Church of the Nazarene until we moved out of Valley Stream and rebranded ourselves as the Bridge Church, Bridge Church. But he was the pastor of this church from 1973 to 2006, 33 years of ministry here. When Pastor Art came here, there were 12 people in this church. But under his leadership, hundreds and hundreds of people, actually thousands of people, came through our little A-frame church in Valley Stream, and many, many, many lives were transformed. A church of just 12 became a church of hundreds. We were talking the other day, and we were trying to count the number of people who have gone into full-time pastoral ministry, both inside and outside of this denomination, as a result of Pastor Art's leadership and influence on their lives. We stopped at 12. Uh, he's an extraordinary, extraordinary man, extraordinary pastor and friend. P pastor Art became the district superintendent of the New York Metro 
district of the Church of the Nazarene in 2004. From 2004 to 2006, he was both the pastor of this church and the district superintendent, the only person in the United States to do that. In 2006, he stepped away from his role here. And then from 2006 to 2017, he led the Metro New York District of the Church of the Nazarene, retiring in 2017. Now he's retired from formal ministry life, but he hasn't retired from, from ministry. Many, many people seek out his counsel. He's involved in many, many different types of things behind the scenes on the district. And his love for God burns as bright now as it ever has been. So he's going to come and he's going to give today's message. We couldn't think of someone more fitting to be here today to speak to us. You'll see his wisdom. You'll see his love for God, his sage advice, his understanding of scripture and the movements of God. And I believe that he has a word for us today. So let's welcome Pastor Art Alexander. Hello, everybody. I want to tell you, it's really good to be with you today. I mean, with all that's going on, to be together is, is really a, a treat at this time. And I'm glad to be in the presence of the Lord and in your presence at the same time. I'm going to begin today by prayerfully reading from a very uh, familiar proverb, uh, Proverb 3. And I'm going to read it prayerfully, and I, I think if we can just, you know, kind of ask God, kind of quiet our hearts and ask God, Lord, what are you saying to me today through your word and through the fellowship of this church and uh, through the music? What, what are you saying to me? Because God is always speaking to us, always, always. We're the ones that are not hearing a lot of times. So, Lord, what do you want to say to us, especially through this scripture. It's Proverbs chapter 3, and it's verses 5 and 6. This is the word of the Lord, and it is this. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God. Now, I don't know about you, but going into 2020, it never crossed my mind that we'd be experiencing the things that are happening now. Never, it never crossed my mind. The things that are happening all around our world, the things that are happening in our country, in our nation, it never crossed my mind some of the things that have, are happening right now in my family, in my life. And it certainly didn't cross my mind what is happening right now to our church, the bridge. I mean, come on. I didn't go into 2020 thinking we were going to have a, 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 a pandemic, a global pandemic. Really? You know, whole nations on lockdown. <laughs> whole nations going through the same thing all together. And the terrible physical effects that this has on the body, the, Ill, the, the, the illnesses and the deaths. And people walking around. Did you ever think you'd be walking around in 2020 with masks on all the time? Germ phobia going on. And all of this having, you know, the effects on, on businesses, effects on churches, on synagogues, all, all of this institutions are really being affected by this. And some of our houses of worship probably won't recover. So we got that, and then we also have in our nation the surfacing of anger and, and hate and division. And our leaders, on all levels, are leading the way in this. And too many of us are following suit. 
Too many of us are taking sides, and it spills over. It's into our streets. Folks, it's even in our neighborhoods where neighbors are against neighbors. It's even in our families at home. It's even there where, did you ever think there'd ever be a time when you'd be afraid to talk to a family member about anything that has to do with government and politics and so on? You're afraid. You don't know. Because there's these people take, we are always taking sides one way or another. You know, this stuff is right out of the Bible. Jesus said, there's going to come a time when fathers are going to be against sons. Sons are going to be against fathers. He goes on to say, and also mothers against daughters, daughters against mothers, mother-in-laws against daughters, all of that. Jesus said, there's going to be a time when that happens. And folks, it's happening. So many people, including Christians, are assuming that they know it all, according to our scripture there. Don't assume you know it all. You know everything. And too many of us are, are driving stakes in the ground, assuming we got it, we know it all. Uh, Christians are still spreading the word, but it's the word they're getting from social media. <laughs> yeah, they just pass on the drivel. They just pass on the half-truths, the anger, and so on. They don't pass on the good news that this is my father's world, God is with us. They're not passing that on. In fact, very few are listening to the voice of God today. The voice of God in prayer. We have become adversaries of each other. Adversaries of each other. Like Rome, we're being eaten away from the inside. The Bible says, I want to I, I say to you, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Our struggle is not against each other. Something much bigger. We're struggling against something much bigger than that, and we don't even know it because we're focused on each other. Our struggle is not against, you know, the Democrats or the Republicans or the Independents or whatever. Our struggle is not against race. You know, red or yellow, or black or white, they are precious in his sight. They're not our enemy. Our struggle is not against nation or cultures. So you, you take that together, and then you add with it what's happening some of the things that we're experiencing in our personal lives. There's a lot of financial stress right now. Maybe not you, but a lot of other people. You see the food lines around our nation? There's stress in relationships, and a lot of that stress comes from, you know, what is happening in the pandemic and in our nation. And people are fighting against people. I mean, uh, drug addiction's way up, crime's way up, all of this other stuff. You know all this stuff, and I'm still saying it to you, all right? And then, you know, there's just the natural things, the natural things of aging, you know, getting older. A lot of, we're all getting older, but some of us getting older farther on down the road, you know? And aging is particularly distressing to us baby boomers who thought we would always be young and beautiful and never die. There's changes in our bodies. Some are dealing with chronic illness, difficulties. And we're dealing still, which is normal, but we're dealing with the passing away of our loved ones. And then you put to this, you know, who of us thought going into 2020 that our pastor would be leaving us this year and we'd be back in search for another shepherd, someone to love and care for us? Thomas Paine wrote, and I think it's in the, uh, the piece that he wrote on the American crisis, but he wrote, 
These are the times that try men's souls. I think we qualify. I think we qualify for that. Now, we've been through all these things before. There have been plagues, pandemics, and we've come through it. I was watching TV the other day, and I think it was a commercial, but I can't tell you what they're trying to sell. And there's this elderly lady standing at, on a tennis court with a, the net be, before her, and she was hitting the ball back across the net. She wasn't moving. She wasn't going to the ball. The ball was coming to her. And as you looked and as they, they told the story, this woman was over 100 years old hitting the tennis ball. She was a survivor of the Spanish flu. We've been through this before. Our nation has faced threats to our unity from the day that we, were, that we were birthed as a nation. But we are still a great nation of great people. We've all known personal hardships. We've suffered very painful losses. Some of us are still suffering from them. Grief. You know, a lot of things are happening to us. But you know what? We're still not giving in. We're still loving life. And we're grateful every day for the gift of life that God has given us. We've all known these things before. And, and I'm going to tell you, do you know that this church is 70, 70 years old? That's the history of the church. We're 70 years old. And we've had to say goodbye and God bless you to many pastors in the past. People you don't even know. There was one pastor, Alexander Kuby, that planted the church, started the church way back when, 70 years ago. And he said, you know, I think that God wants me to plant a church in western Nassau County. I think that's what he wants to do. Well, obviously, Alexander Q, we moved on. The person that built the A-frame in, in Valley Stream, some of us know about that. He moved on. I mean, this happens in local churches. This happens. They all came. They all left. And you know what? And I think this is very significant, by the way. None of these pastors were asked to leave. They weren't asked. Um, why that is significant to me is that it says a lot about the church and the character of the church, the people. You know, none of these pastors ask, were asked to leave. You, you better leave now, you know. They initiated the change. It was their decision. And this church has always sent them off with God's blessing. And this church has always moved on to the next new thing. So, nothing that is happening in this very strange year of 2020 is happening for the first time ever. Just the first time for some of us. Still, knowing this doesn't make it any easier. In every situation, that I've, I've, I've just mentioned, all of them. People are suffering. They're, they're suffering loss. They're, they're grieving. They're, they have fear of the future. What's going to happen in all of this? This is not easy. And anybody that says it is easy, they're assuming they know what they don't know. So how do we look at all of this? Well, I suppose we can throw a little God talk around. God talk. You know, God is in charge, God is in control, and if we just pray, it'll all work out. You know, God is control. That is kind of a, you know, red flag for not really having to dig down deep, work through some of these issues, and come out victorious. People that say, God is in control, just pray, it'll work out. That works only for those who are healthy, wealthy, and have enough social and economic power to control their own situation. 
God is in control, they say. Folks, if God, the author of all life, the one that is loving you right now as you are breathing, if God, the giver of all good gifts, the lover of our bodies and our souls, if God were in control, do you really believe all of this would be going on? God is in control. Why, folks, God is not even controlling you. <laughs> He's not. If God, who is love, was in control of you, would you have done some of the things that you've done in your life? Would you have hurt the people like you have, some of the people? Would you have hurt others? If God was controlling, would some of the things that we've messed up, would, would that have happened? You know, God does not control us. And it's called free will. We are free to be. We are. We are free. God gave it to us. We are free to act and do what we want to do. And the power of God is not seen in controlling us or preventing us from being hateful or greedy or violent or an egomaniac. No. God's power is seen in his power to forgive and to restore us into his likeness and the likeness of his son. Over and over and over again, God is restoring, making new. It's called resurrection. You know, that's God's job description. God's, God, God's job description isn't, you know, prevent things from happening. His job description is bringing life and beauty back from all the deaths we experience by our own hands. You know, the old-fashioned word for that is simply sin. And we all practice it. We all practice it. Everything we are experiencing right now globally and nationally and personally can be traced right back to man's freedom to do whatever he wants to or she wants to do. Can be traced right back to our freedom to do what benefits only us and nobody else. Let me say, there is no political solution for this. There is no political solution to self-centeredness and self-preoccupation and self-referential on everything. There is no economic solution for this. There is no institutional solution for this. Folks, you can't grow a church big enough to change the human heart. It's not possible. Not possible. You can't have enough money to change the world, God said to us. You're going to be my disciple? You can't serve both God and money. He said that. Okay? So, the reality is, this is where we find ourselves in this year of our Lord, 2020. This is what we've got. This. These are trying times. You know, this is our reality. And the only way to deal with reality is this way. Accept it, then act. Accept it, then act. Whatever your reality is, whatever it is, accept it. Always work with reality, not against it. Accept it. And don't spend a lot of time trying to figure out why it happened. 
You don't know. Or what possible purpose could there be in this? People are talking about that all the time. Or uh, why is it happening? I mean, is there someone to blame for all of this? That's all a waste of time and energy. Except the reality that, that, that day you have. You know, life gives you experiences that opens you up to more consciousness of what's happening. Accept it. That's our reality. Don't spend a lot of time, you know, mulling it over or whatever. You know, it takes a great deal of humility and faith to accept what happens to us without assuming that we know it all. There is a lot that we think we know that we don't know. And neither do the people on social media, cable news, or whatever. They don't know. Let me tell you a story. And this story is a little corny, but it illustrates my point. Uh, I, was, I was born and raised on a farm. I know corn, okay? So this is corny, right up front. You might have heard about it. One day in late summer, an old farmer was working in his field with his old sick horse, and the horse wasn't doing well. And the farmer felt bad, so he said, you know, I'm just going to turn my horse loose. He's going to be free for the rest of his life. He can, he can enjoy the rest of his life without the work. Well, when some of the farmer's friends heard about him letting his horse go, they stopped by and they said, we heard what happened. Uh, well, how are you going to live? How are you going to do your work? How are you going to survive? That's what they're saying. They saying, this is bad. The farmer said, bad? Good? Who knows? We'll see. A couple days later, the old horse came back, totally refreshed after all of his rest and eating all the organic grass and whatever out there. But he brought with him back 12 young, healthy horses. And word got out. And it wasn't long before the people stopped by again. And it's like, wow, you got to be thrilled. This is so good. And the farmer said, good, bad, who knows? We'll see. The next morning, the farmer's only son, while out training, the new wild horses was thrown to the ground and broke bones in his legs. And his friends, again, leaning on their own understanding, said, ah, this is bad. Now you'll have to do all the work yourself. How are you going to survive? Again, the farmer answered, good, bad, who knows? We'll see. Now, that country was at war. And one day, the army recruiter came to recruit the young men in that area to go and fight in the war and maybe die or get maimed for the rest of their lives. But the farmer's son couldn't because he had broken bones in his legs. He couldn't go. Hmm. Good? Bad? Who knows? We'll see. Well, I could go on and on, but you get the idea, right? You got it already. And here I want to say that every event is part of a larger whole. The meaning and nature of any event, you know, what is understood to be good or bad, is always prejudged because we don't yet have the whole picture. But God does. So often we think we know the will of God, and so often we don't. So often the will of God looks like my will. 
something great happens to me. Ah, oh, that's the will of God. You know? I want to do this. Oh, that's the will of God for me to do that. So much of the will of God looks a lot like my will. That's why we have to trust God and lean not on our own understanding. And folks, this takes great, great humility. And we're all trying to be our own gods. The captain of our own fate, that sort of thing. It takes great humility to accept and trust. Great faith. The Bible says, and this is, this is, these are the words of God, and he said, my way, my ways are not your ways, and your ways are not my ways. You don't have the whole picture. Now, if you want biblical context for the parable about the horses and the farmer and all that other stuff, read in Genesis, starting in Genesis 37, the story of Joseph. You remember Joseph? He was one of uh, Jacob's 12 sons. Jacob loved him more than all the rest and sent him out to check on his brother out with the sheep or whatever they were doing out there, see if they were doing the right way. And his brothers hated him, so they threw him in a pit. Hmm. And when you throw him in a pit, you know, no water, no nothing, they left him to die, they left. Ah, that's bad. But then a caravan from Egypt came along, saw him, pulled him out. Oh, that's good. Hmm. Then they sold him into slaves, uh, to, uh, as a slave in Egypt. That's bad. And then Potiphar's wife, the person he was serving, she lied about him trying to do something with her or whatever. That's bad. He's thrown in jail. That's bad. Well, you get the idea again. And if you want to read the end of the story, go ahead and read it in Genesis chapter 37. Trust God, not your own understanding. We don't yet have the full picture of anything. Trust God and be wary of what you think you understand concerning all the situations. And the reason we need to question our understanding of the events and happenings in our lives is that we don't know. We don't know. We never have the complete picture. We never know for sure the outcome of these events, never. We accept the reality. It takes great faith, great humility. And then we act. We work with the reality, not against it. We don't resist what is. We act. When it comes down to all the things that I, uh, I talked about today, you know, the pandemic and stuff like that, what, 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 what can we do? Well, we can require, we can do what's required. Uh, wear a mask, socially distance, wash your hands, whatever, whatever. And I'm not making a political statement here. If you think I am, you're assuming you know it all. I'm not making a, a political statement at all. Do some of these things. You know, the mark of a disciple of Jesus Christ is that they can waive their own rights. They can waive them. You can do those things. You can support your local neighborhood businesses. That would be a good thing to do. Uh, it'd be a good thing, you know, even to leave a little extra in those businesses if you can. You know, you can stay connected with family and friends. You can stay connected with old people like me. Make sure we're all right, right? That's some of the things you can do. You can't fight against this pandemic, but you can act. What about the anger and the violence that's all around us? Folks, insist, insist on peace. Insist on peace. Peace in your own life. This world is only 
at peace as much as you are at peace. Practice forgiveness. And really listen to the other side without interruption. You know, there are really more than two sides to everything. There are three sides. And the third way is that you can only get there if you listen. Listen to the voice of God in everything you do. And you know what? Sometimes when you sit and listen to someone saying nothing, all is said. They learn from the light, not from fighting. Jesus said, blessed, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. In your personal lives, no matter the situation, act. Don't curl up. <laughs> Lay on a couch or whatever. Act. Accept reality and act. Someone has said, believe the diagnosis, but not the prognosis. That makes sense. You know, believe the reality that is before you, but don't believe what people say is going to happen. And whether it's relational problems or chronic physical conditions, aging issues, financial stress, the loss of any kind. You can do something. You just simply say, this is what I have been handed, and this is what I'm going to do about it. And what about this fellowship? The bridge. We are in liminal space here. <laughs> We got one foot in one room and one foot in another room. We have one foot in the past and one foot in the future. We're in between right now. What about the bridge? You know, our neighbors are talking. They heard about this, just like the old farmer's neighbors. And I don't know if they're coming to you or not, but I'm, I'm hearing a lot of things. They're coming and they're talking. Their concern is, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And they say, how are you going to make it? This is bad. Hmm. Bad? Good? Who knows? We'll see. To put things in perspective, there's a Latin phrase that I can't even begin to say, I don't think. Subspecie and to whatever. Translated, in light of eternity, will this really matter? I want to close as I began with a kind of like praying a scripture. And it's from Psalm 62. And this will be kind of a, like a closing prayer. All right? And I'll, and I'll read it. More like a prayer. Truly, my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. Truly, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. Yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from Him. One thing God has spoken, two things I've heard. Power belongs to you, God. And with you, Lord, is unfailing love. Thank you for listening. God bless you.
to hold them. You so desperately want to love them. And just breathe your love into them. God, so please just take down those walls, the walls of fear for people who feel they aren't lovable. Some people don't feel they can receive that love from you, God, but it's not true, God. It's for everyone. Every broken heart, every happy soul, everyone in mourning, everyone in darkness, everyone who is comforted, everyone who seems to have it all together. God, your love's for everyone. Those that we can't love, you still love. And God, I know you can love me all the way. So God, I just thank you for that. Keep our hearts open to that love. Because love is the only way. Your love is the only way. Well, it's been great to be with you today. If you'd like to keep up to date on what's going on in the life and ministry of our church, you can just check out our website at thebridgeli.com and you'll get an update on everything that's going on and the things that you can tap into in terms of our ministries within the church. I'd like to leave you today with a prayer and a declaration from scripture. And here it is. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all of the Lord's people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled, filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we ask or imagine according to his power, which is at work in us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Have a great week. God bless you.